Welcome back. So Nathan's introduced you to the course. Now I'm going to take you through a little of the first part of the design thinking process, which is the discover section. So when we talk about discovery, really what we're looking at is empathetically connecting with customers' needs, becoming good empathetic researchers. So why do we discover? Well, as Nathan mentioned to you in the overview, more uh, innovations fail from a lack of customers than fail from a, a problem with the product or the technology itself. So what we need to do here is we really need to fall in love with the problem, not with the solution to it. Too many innovations come up with a solution and then go to try to find a problem. But that's not what we want to do. We want to start with the problem, not the solution. So what we need to do is actually go out and discover insights, insights that our customers have, our prospective customers have, and we need to, to empathetically research with those customers. As Steve Blank said, real life insights don't live in your office. They exist in the world of your customers and potential customers. You have to get out of the building. So we're gonna do that along the way. Why do we discover? Well, there are four real reasons for it. The first is understanding. You can't really innovate for somebody that you don't have empathy for. The second is that we come up with real world insights, not the sort that we make up in an ivory tower. So, so not like the Segway example uh, that I gave you earlier. The other thing to bear in mind is that this deeply motivates teams. When we discover a customer need, it deeply motivates teams to try to solve that need. And finally, we're working on meaningful things. Uh, we, we've identified problems that are, are worthy of solving. So what we're trying to do here, what discovery really is, to give you a definition of it, is we're trying to understand and empathize with who your users are, what's important to them, and what their pains and delights are. So what is empathy then? Uh, empathy is the ability to understand and share the feelings of another. You often hear people talk about empathy as the ability to put yourself in the shoes of, of someone else for, for, for a time. But we're really talking about connecting with their feelings. That's really important. I'm going to show you a brief video here, uh, and, and we'll, we'll talk about that a little more once we're done.
So what are we looking for? The problem is that if we ask the same questions of the same people in the same ways, we're going to keep getting the same old results. What we're looking for here is fresh insights, the untapped latent needs that nobody's discovered yet, or, or importantly, in some cases, have been discovered, but nobody's actioned yet. That's what we're really trying to get to. So how we do that is, is like a detective. We pursue multiple lines of inquiry, and we try to get to, to the crux of the innovation issue that we're trying to solve. To do that, we use a thing called the multiple sources framework. And what we mean by that is that there are two types of, of customers, two types of people that we'll deal with. There are the mainstream and there are the extreme. Yeah? So mainstream users are you know, the, the folks that your product is targeted at. Uh, the extreme users are at either end of the spectrum, either people that you expect never to use your, your product or people that you expect to use it all of the time. And what we try to do is, is make sure that we connect with both of those groups. So in each, with each of those groups, the mainstream and the extreme, what we try to do is be the customer, be with the customer, and learn about the customer. So with the mainstream group, what we try to do is immerse ourselves a little bit in the situation that that customer experiences. To be with the customer, what we try to do is observe them and talk to them in, in the right context. And to learn about them, we talk to the people around them. With extreme customers, we do similar things. We put ourselves into the situation of extreme users. We observe and talk to extreme users. But the difference is when it comes to learning about the customer, we talk to experts. Experts are usually able to tell us what their extreme users are like. As an example of this, there was a, a, a famous um, organization that makes uh, kitchen appliances and, and kitchen tools. And they were designing a pizza cutter. And what they did was they looked at their extreme users and in doing so created a wonderful product for the mainstream. What they looked at was people who were unlikely to buy their products ever, children and grandparents. And they were designing a pizza cutter and what they noticed was that both children and grandparents are a little weaker than their usual target market somewhere in the middle. Kids find it hard to push down on the pizza cutter. Uh, also, grandparents, a little bit frailer than, than some of us, find it difficult to push down on the pizza cutter. And obviously, you don't want to lean on a pizza cutter. That would have a detrimental effect to your hand. So what they came up with was uh, a pizza cutter that had a guard over the top of the wheel so that children and grandparents could actually lean on it and really push it to, to, cut the pizza cut, uh, to cut the pizza correctly. Now, that worked beautifully for children and grandchildren, but it also worked for their mainstream market. Because although we may be a little stronger than grandparents or children, who doesn't like to cut pizza easier? So, so we need to bear in mind that it's important to look at both those mainstream customers and also the extreme customers. So what we've got to do is immerse ourselves in the situations and experience that our customers have. So, there, there was a, a, a rather famous airline who was doing a design thinking program uh, to try to improve their, their customer experience. And they said to the executives of, of this airline, we want you to experience what your customer experiences on a long haul flight. And they said, oh, well, we've taken plenty of long haul flights. <laughs> and the response was, no, we want you to experience what your customer experiences. You get into a limousine, you're driven to a first class lounge where you have a glass of champagne before you get onto the plane and turn left. <laughs> What's going to happen this time is an Uber is going to pick you up and you're going to sit in the general airport with everybody else and you're going to have a long haul flight in economy so you can experience what your customers experience. And that's really important. We, we really want to embed ourselves in the experience that our customers have. We want to observe and interview our customers. So spend a little bit of time just watching. What's the context that this person's operating in? And once you've worked out a little bit about that context, then go and interview the customer. And we'll talk about those interviews and, and a couple of tips for, for making them work a little later on. You also want to talk to people who are experts on the customer and their journey. So for example, if you're trying to improve the, the long haul flight experience, you should probably talk to somebody in bag baggage services. They can tell you a little bit about how difficult it can be to turn a plane around, how difficult it can be to, to get people's luggage to them on time, etc., etc. The other things that we can look into with Discover is deprivation and disruption. Now, deprivation uh, is, 
is, is pretty much in vogue at the moment. With, with the COVID-19 world, we've been deprived of a lot of our normal life. And what we're noticing is that that's a hotbed for innovation. So because we can't go to the office and interact, we're finding new ways of interacting with people. Disruption is also great, when, particularly when you're looking at a space. Uh, and, and what we're trying to do here is, is disrupt people a little and, and see how they respond to the, the challenge, challenges that are thrown their way and use that as an opportunity also to innovate. Basically what both of these techniques, deprivation and disruption, do is they heighten both the needs and the pain points of the customer so that we can get better insights on them. So I'm now going to introduce you to the, the, the how of interviewing and we've got 10 tips uh, that we're going to share with you that will allow you to really get the most uh, out of a good customer interview. The first thing that we recommend is that you interview in pairs. You're each going to pick up different observations. We recommend that you have an interviewer and a note taker. That way the interviewer can concentrate on the questions that are being asked and the note taker can make sure that we're capturing accurately what the customer is saying to us. It's safer for you. It's more fun as well because you both get to concentrate on a particular part of the process. You can consider recording the interview, but always ask permission of the interviewee first. The second tip we're going to give you is to observe first. You can get some really interesting insights about observing the customer in situ. Take a moment, see if you can get a holistic picture of the environment that they're working in. Context is really important in empathetic interviews. When it comes to observation, we want to look at it from a what, how, and why perspective. Firstly, what is this person or persons doing? We want you to not only notice the person, but also notice the context that they're functioning within. How are they doing it? We want you to pretend that you're describing the picture to somebody who's not there looking at it. And why are they acting this way? We want you to take a guess. We want you to form a story, some sort of a hypothesis. But then really importantly, we want you to go to that customer and ask them. The third uh, tip that we're going to share with you is to be an objective sponge. Leave your own beliefs at the door. Don't judge. We want you to be an active listener. We want you to avoid problem solving or placating the customer at this stage. We want you to realize that silence is golden and that you should let the customer fill that silence. They should do about 90% of the talking in a good interview. The fourth is to realize that your introduction is important. Most customers will never have been interviewed before and it can tend to take them off guard a little. A good introduction puts both you and the customer at ease and you need to be comfortable and confident to get the most out of an interview. There are a number of points that you can see on the slide uh, that's in front of you now that will assist you with doing an excellent introduction. The fifth point we want to share with you is to remember that you're in control of the interview. You can reinforce the positive and you can control the direction of the interview. Use your body language to encourage customers to tell you more. Paraphrase to clarify that you've understood what they've said. But most importantly, if they start to go negative or get off track, bring them back on track gently. Gently refocus them on, on what it is that you're hoping to get from the interview. The sixth point that we want to share with you is to employ a logical structure. So start broad and then probe deeper into interesting areas. We want you to try to talk about the general and then focus in on the specific areas that you want to explore. The seventh point is to ask great questions. Open questions are going to stop you from having dead ends with the customer. Begin questions with how and what and could you tell me about. Yeah? We also want to make sure that we avoid leading questions or emotionally charged questions. Open questions tend to encourage customers to talk and that will help you to generate unique insights. The eighth tip is to seek stories. You really want to engage with your customer and learn about who they are. Conduct your research in the moment or, or while the experience is fresh. When it comes to seeking stories, you can try these little tips. Tell me about the last time you, whatever it is that you're looking to, to, uh, to, to get insights on. Tell me about an experience you've had with. Tell me about how you felt when this happened. What were you feeling or thinking at that moment? You can ask questions like this that will really help you to get into the stories that the customers have. A lot of the time we make the mistake in interviews of saying, tell me about your typical Wednesday morning. And the customer does, but because they're telling you about the typical Wednesday morning, it's an average. Yeah. So 
better is tell me about this morning and then tell me about how that differs. Tell me about the best morning you've ever had or the worst morning. That way you're getting into seeking real stories. You really want to probe. That's the ninth tip that we want to give you. The first answer a customer gives you is rarely the truth. Yeah. We want you to probe deeper and drive into, uh, the, 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 drive into an understanding of the behaviors that the customer is displaying. Don't be afraid to challenge or question, preferably in a playful way, what they're saying to you also. So when you're digging deeper, you want to be almost like a six-year-old child and keep asking why over and over and over again. Can you tell me why that matters to you? Okay, and that's important because, tell me more about that. Why is that so important to you? How come? So to clarify, you can ask all sorts of different questions that allow you to probe deeper into what the customer uh, is, is experiencing. The tenth tip and final tip that we want to give you is to take notes during or immediately after the interview. Otherwise, you'll forget and, and you know, we can add our own biases and distort the results that we've got. So go to a quiet place immediately afterwards. Make sure that you write down as many notes as you can. These will be really important to you as we go through the rest of the design thinking process. We also want to talk with you a little bit about the behaviors that innovators display. Innovators are curious people. They look at a problem with beginner's eyes. They ask the right questions. They're objective. They use their eyes and their ears to observe the, the, the scenario that the customers, uh, uh, the, the context that the customer's operating within. Uh, and they have rapport with customers, which they can build through the, the introductions we mentioned earlier. And they have respect for that person's opinions, even when they differ from their own. So what we're going to ask you to do is we're going to ask you to go out and about and interview customers in relation to their needs about the design challenge that we spoke about earlier. And that design challenge, just to remind you, is how might we design the future of flexi working to improve people's working lives? Now, in order to do this, you're going to have to do some preparation. We're going to ask you to put your new discovery skills into practice by being, observing and interviewing with customers. But we need to prep for that. The first thing that we need to prepare is the multiple sources framework. You may want to re-familiarize yourself with that, but I want you to agree what activities you're going to do and which pairs are going to do what and go where. What we're targeting here is eight to 12 activities per pair. You may want to write a discussion guide about the areas that you want to explore, the questions that you want to ask and hopefully have answered. We also want you to organize a time to check in with the other pairs from your team to make sure that you're sharing insights uh, amongst each other. It's really important that we finish this discovery exercise before we move on to the distill online learning, which is the next part of the design thinking process. We want you to make sure that you're capturing your findings. We want you to make sure that you're capturing what you see including the context the customer's operating with, artifacts they're interacting with, the customer themselves and their body language. We want you to capture what you hear, including quotes, stories, keywords, contradictions, etc. And we also want you to capture what you feel the customer is feeling and thinking, their beliefs, their confusions, etc. Because that's going to be really, really important to us when it comes time for us to distill these insights into something real. Thank you.